that, that you research those topics at least a little bit to, to get the vocabulary and terminology down. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. That was great. Okay, I, um, before we go into the Q&A, and we, you know, we have about 10 minutes, which is great for both Howard and Chris, um, I just wanted to tell people that even though the, the, the galleries are closed upstairs, um, the bookstore is open, and um, there is uh, the exhibition catalog for the exhibition Haunted is on sale at a reduced rate, 50% off, so maybe you want to take advantage of that. Uh, so we do have some time for questions. Any body? Um, thank you to both speakers for your um, super interesting contributions. Um, Chris, I'm really glad that you mentioned um, the topic of up because we've experienced over the, yeah, or quite recently actually that um, that artists whose standard definition works, we have had in our collection for a time, works from the 1990s, um, that artists want to revisit their works and up them to a high res, and then resell that high definition copy to us, to a special, for a special price, um, of course. Uh, <laughs> um, Artists like, um, and I'm just putting these names out there because um, they're very, you know, well known and very um, into the technical side of videos as well, and should probably know about what you just talked uh, talked about. Artists like Bill Viola or Peter Campus who want to, um, yeah upres their works. And I'm really glad that we all just saw um, in picture, in image, um, the proof that we're not gaining any more information than was produced back in the 1990s. And in the worst, we're probably just, um, you know, producing these artifacts or, or softening to it that is actually not part of the authentic image. Um, another thing that I've um, I'm taking out of your talk, Chris, um, is a huge confusion about formats in HD. Um, and I think maybe it's a little bit comparable um, to the time um, around the early 80s where so many um, analog tape formats were competing before um, you know, VHS uh, made the run and, and um, was superior to Video 2000 and, and a, lot, a lot of other formats that were around. And it, um, it really shows to us how, how um, market-driven um, this whole theme is and and for the art world and the museum's world it's really um, super hard now to buy high definition works and artists are producing in all sorts of in like all these different formats you just saw there artists are using them and um, every video work that is coming in now is basically high definition it's a different high definition format all the time um, it's really hard um, for us to um, keep up with the speed of, of um, tech, tech, uh, you know, changes in technology and, and ask for the right master mm -hmm. formats. And I would actually um, want to ask that question to you. Um, am I doing a mistake as if I'm asking them for HDCAM SR um, tapes as archival masters and 10-bit um, uncompressed files? Do you have better suggestions for HD master formats? Well, uh, I wanted to respond to the first point too, but I'll answer the second one first. I think that um, one, as I say, for, you know, there's the, at the web page that Howard referenced, uh, digitalpreservation.gov. Um, there's a great section that focuses on sustainability factors um, uh, and and how to assess formats, and and it's it's in the context of file-based formats, but it's equally applicable to pretty much anything you can, you can ad adopt it uh, to. Um, and, and actually, we did a paper on wrappers and codecs that's published on our website that, that goes into, in the context of wrappers and codecs, how to apply sustainability factors and ways to address that. Um, so it, there is no single answer. There's not, I mean, it's, it really depends on a combination of the infrastructure of the organization with, which is acquiring it. 
Um, so your accessibility to the format that you're acquiring, like access is obviously key. You want to be able to, in order to do collection management, you have to be able to have access. So, um, you know, that, that's an important consideration. Um, and, and of course, that, that's who, what, what expertise do you have access to? What's your technical infrastructure? At least what, do you, what technical infrastructure do you have access to? Um, That's right. So if we think, so if you think about vendors, then it's a, then the question becomes, well, what do your vendors have? Because they, they don't necessarily have any HD format. You know, there there may be specific ones that they can support. But in terms of um, compression, you know, what's what's a good what's a good format for now to go to? Of course, it should be widely should be widely distributed uh -huh. as you know, the G better for standard definition. Uh huh. And oh, maybe we have to point that out. I don't know if everybody's aware of that, but um, you can't um, you can't uh, use digital better come tapes for high definition. It only holds standard definition video. So that's that's where my question is coming from, because in the SD world, in the standard definition world, um, you know we are very confident with digital better. It's all over the place and um, and well established, but for HD, um, we are not there yet. Maybe in 10 years' time, we don't have to have this discussion, but the market is simply not there yet. Yeah, I, I'd say, uh, regardless of the distribution format, I think uncompressed is what we'd like to always get. That's, you know, as our ideal is what we have over here. However, repositories or archives are in the mood with Born Digital. Uh, more by necessity than by choice to accept to have to accept whatever comes in the door because you could set us you could set a submission standard chances of it being met are, are probably not high but however having said that I would I would say that collaboration with the artist on trying to you know I think you you should decide what your ideal formats are for your institution and that if you have input into the process to to do that if you don't have control and you get what you get, then then you start looking at obsolescence monitoring. Do you migrate? Is it is it a really esoteric and proprietary format that you want to migrate out of immediately, or is it something that has fairly wide adoption? There's lots of tools to work with. Your vendor has access to it that you feel comfortable holding on to and assessing it on a routine basis. Can we try to take one more question. Wait, sure. it, let, let, let me let me just make a quick response to that. Um, the other thing is you really want to try to get the best quality out of the artist from the very start, you know, the, the, the highest quality that you can take in yourself and support. So for the up res kind of question, if uh, not, not, not specifically for SD to HD, but if you had a highly, if you had originally gotten something on a DVD highly compressed, you wouldn't have many choices unless you got that as the exhibition copy, but you got their original uncompressed files in the first place as we get better display devices, as you get better um, uh, ability for displaying things in different ways. The idea that of having gotten the very best quality that you can that you can support over a period of time is what we really, where we really need to be at with the artists. Yeah, actually, I did, I, I, I'm sorry, but I just want to respond to that. That, that first point that feeds off of what Howard just said is that uh, these artists that are saying we have, we, you know, depending on what they originally, depending on what they have and what they gave you, so if they gave you something that what they shot as anamorphic or was on film and then they created a standard definition, uh, four by three, deliverable to you, then it's feasible that they could go back to an original uh, that's either on film that they, sh that regardless of aspect ratio, they could digitize at a higher resolution, or if it's anamorphic and it was cropped when they gave it to you, give you as a widescreen. Um, but so that feeds into the point that what Howard talked about is when you originally acquire pieces, you want to be getting that stuff. You want the highest resolution. You want the uh, uh, originals uh, upon acquisition of the yeah, and and you might you know the further upstream you can go, the better. Even though you may not 
ever use it. You know, so as I mentioned, your edit, the edit decision lists, the elements that they used uh, to, to assemble it all, as, as Chris pointed out, those could have been in some kind of very robust type of format that is relatively sustainable, like film. Um, um, uh, and, and then that can be used to remix it later according exactly to their edit decision list to, to, to recreate it in a more robust format later. Okay. One, one more question. I just wanted to comment on Joanna's uh, comment. Um, what we found out is in many cases we prefer to get whatever the... Oh, sorry. Um, my name is Patricia Falcão, and I'm working at the Tate in time-based media conservation. Um, what we came across is when we started asking for uncompressed files or stuff like that to artists who didn't have the experience, we ended up having very weird things. So right now what we are coming to is, okay, just give us what you edited on, and if we have to migrate something, then we'll just do it when we get it. But at least we know how we did it and how consistent that is while, well, yeah. Or the exports for that. But if it's DV, it's, it's better than a very weird uncompressed format that you've you have to do a very long Google search to find anything about it. So. Yeah, I mean, if it was all created in DV, you would want, so that, I mean, you have, yeah, yeah, if it's all created in DV, you don't want them to create uncompressed, that'd be like up res and you don't gain anything yeah. and it's higher storage capacity requirements. Exactly. So, so it's usually, that's what my experience told me. It's high uh, we don't have a lot of experience with high definition. We're starting to have problems and trying to figure out how to do with it. We're using D5 for most of the archiving, so we still can do we can still do HD D5 for some of the formats. I just came across one case where I couldn't do. I can't remember why it is. I think it was a sound issue. And and just to be clear, if you are specifying that you want uncompressed files, you need to actually not just say uncompressed. You have to actually specify which codec you want. Uh, so which encoding uh, yeah. is used to do that. That, that, that will, I mean, we ran into it with the server, right? It could only place certain things. I have the red light hitting me in the face. So. <laughs> okay. And All then, right. uh, sorry, can I just comment something on uh, that Howard said? I just have an issue. I guess it depends on whether you're an archive or a museum, and it's certainly interesting to know how an artist worked. But on the other hand, I see it almost as historically relevant, whether I got a really bad DV tape that somebody edited at home, so I find it a bit on the border when you think, you know, if you're a very young artist and you're editing, even if you manage to scan your film and you're editing on DV, isn't it also part of how it is made? And isn't it a bit on the border to go back and want to? <laughs> no, 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 ab absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, there's uh, some parts of this is, is the kind of archival side to it, and it's the you know, what was the process and understanding the process. But, uh, you know, as, as Mona has said this morning and, 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 and has been a leading advocate, if we don't understand the process, if we don't understand the process that they went through, it becomes hard after they're dead to try to keep it going uh, for, uh, to keep that, that to, the kinds of transformations that we will have to go through to play it in the future on the devices that are the only ones that we have. That will be very difficult if we don't understand the processes that they went through. So in, in that respect, I think it's still very important to to uh, have at minimum documentation of what those processes were, and if 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 you can support those elements and keeping those elements, those are those can offer you great insight. As as Mona showed you, or no. Uh, uh, as, as Joanna showed, the, just being able to look at the, uh, the um, um, uh, data on a tape that shows the various uh, times that that tape was copied, so you can see how many generations. You lose, 
you lose things like that when you move, when you transform from one space to another um, that, that you can actually see on those uh, uh, if, if you've kept the original material. All right. What time should we be back, Dara? We're, we're back at 2.30? Okay, so back at 2.30, and I want to thank the speakers from this morning's session.